our country managing director Lee, who got uh, a call from Abuja and uh, who is it to say to say no. So so I have to quickly stand in for, for him. So uh, what we'll be discussing with uh, shortly is just on the survival strategies uh, for small and medium enterprises. Um, we'll be bringing our outside outsider view because most of us here are actually veterans and I was happy that 50% of us here have actually started our business for about five to nine years and uh, 30% have actually done this business more than 10 years and then those 20% are uh, less than five years, which is quite encouraging because the, the data suggests that uh, quite a lot of SME actually died in the first uh, five years and uh, uh, a lot of them die within five to ten years and only five to ten percent actually survive. So if you have about uh, 30 percent who have actually been running this business for more than ten years, I think we need we, we need to congratulate us and we have 30. So if about 80 percent have actually done beyond five years. So I think uh, you are uh, one of the, of the few who actually uh, succeeded. And uh, So today we, we will look at this uh, in terms of the threats. I will look at uh, the risk qualification by the former Defense Secretary in the US. And we will look at the curious policies. Uh, like you, although you are veterans, uh, some of the key challenges that face uh, SME in Nigeria mostly has to do with uh, capital. And when we talk about capital, not just that there is no capital, uh, it's either the source of the fund or the accessibility to the fund. Even when the fund is there, how accessible are these are these funds? And uh, again, in Nigeria is one country that is very very difficult to do business. For example, SME because of the ash uh, the operating environment uh, we operate here. And again, infrastructure, doctor has mentioned it, the road, transport, energy, everything cannot be overemphasized. We have a sort of cultural issues as well. A lot of us make small money and the next thing we think about is how to take our, uh, to be, become a red cow chief, to marry more wives. And uh, you know, again, we have problems separating our, our business, our partner from uh, personal finances from business. It happened to my wife when she was starting her business. I have to, we have to fight and fight over. Until I first have to develop a simple uh, spreadsheet that look, okay, I say you are making money from this. Let's see how much are you fueling your car? How much do you want to pay yourself a salary? So until then she was able to run because she, she was thinking she was making money. I thought that they are not making money and it was a struggle. She thought I wanted to go close to the business. You know the way we went out. <laughs> so, you know, that. so you know, so you don't separate that. Then sometimes we, we, we don't separate what the revenue is from what our profit is. So these are some of the issues that, that, that we face and it's natural, especially in our environment. So once you make money, you see contractor, somebody who just make money and the first thing can be who are going to make 30 percent And you begin to spend that 30 percent even before executing the contract or even before selling the product that you need to sell. So you're already thinking, oh, this how much I'm, uh, this how much I'm making. Again, we don't have good management, or you want to hold onto it alone. You don't want to employ people. You don't know that when you when, when you pay, you get more, you get competent people to, to, to work with you. We are not keeping records. We are not paying taxes. Quite a lot of things are happening. I tell people that most of the people that they are probing today, probably most of them do not even invest money. But for the fact that they could not even keep you record properly. So it's as if that you've embezzled money. The same thing when the tax authority come after you. Maybe not that you are default, but the fact that you cannot even uh, provide a good record. So it's possible to work after you. So that's the summary. There are a lot of issues in the when we look at Nigeria, there are a lot of issues that are actually facing you and uh, which is very, very unfortunate. But we'll start this uh, with uh, the classification that uh, Luna uh, Roswell gave in 2002. He was two time a defense secretary in the US. Uh, in 2002, he was defense secretary to, to the W. Bush. So, some of the trends that are facing uh, the US then. So, we divide them into three. I said there are known knowns, uh, the known unknowns, and the unknowns unknowns. 
And that's the way we're going to categorize the trends that I see facing us as a small and medium uh, enterprises today. The no no's are some of the things that we know. We know that they will likely occur and we can easily estimate their impact. The known unknowns are things that we now know we don't know. We know it might happen and not happen. It's just difficult for us to estimate the impact it's going to happen us. But the unknown unknowns is where we probably will not have into because you don't know whether it will happen, it just happened by chance. So to actually even respond to that is very, very difficult. Until it happens, you don't know whether it's going to, it's going to happen. So we're going to be looking at the threats uh, that face uh, that, that you face in those three three areas. So the known the known knowns. There are things that are very, very uh, cumbersome because uh, it's talking about the policy. Uh, now they remove what well, I don't know whether subsidy has been removed or not. But all I know is that the price has come down and because the price of crude oil has gone down, so it has positive impact on us and people are not shouting. If the price of oil was hundred and uh, subsidy was removed, I'm sure most of us who are supporting this would have gone a bit to jobs and be saying different we knew what happened some years some years ago. So one way or the other, it is not going to be sustainable. Uh, Doctor has talked about government revenue. It's not going to be sustainable to still keep financing subsidy. I've not seen the, I've looked at the budget, the one I saw, I don't know whether that's the correct one. I'm not sure I saw anything about subsidy. They are not, don't know whether anything, provision was to be made. So if tomorrow we are praying for government to get revenue so that oil price will go up, then when oil price go up, we know that the price of uh, premium products is going to go up as well. So, you know, it's, 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 it's either here or there. So, it's likely going to happen. When it happens, we're going to see rise in energy cost. It's going to affect us uh, here. We're going to see transportation cost. It's going to affect us. We're going to see sharp rise in inflation. And you know now, if you want to even go and buy Gary, somebody's likely to tell you that dollar has gone up. That will be, that will be. Anywhere you get to now, home, that has gone up. Then tomorrow if price hit, uh, 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 when the petrol should go to 100 or something. Ah, when you want to buy anything, they say, oh, petrol. You know, the, the way it is in Nigeria, everybody just wants to say uh, petrol. The increase in tax rates, and I think this one might affect us as well. Um, government has no revenue, and government is going to be very strict in collecting taxes. And again, there is going to be punishment for people who are defaulters. So, because we have to one way or the other to, to fund our revenue. So, tax is going to be very, very important. And again, there will be agitation uh, to increase VAT from 5 to 10 percent. And we are one of the lowest paying uh, uh, countries in terms of uh, VAT. So, it's likely going to in, in, in increase again. Our operating cost is uh, likely going to increase. The foreign exchange uh, as exclusion until like uh, two days ago, we are not able to deposit. Uh, Dollars into our into our accounts until uh, two days ago. We don't know what policy is going to come again tomorrow. And again, you see some of the items have been banned, you can't import, and it affects quite a lot. I've seen a lot of people who do online who do online businesses. They are not able to fund. I want to I to buy those three dollar app on my phone. The other time I couldn't buy because there was restriction. So I was telling people, okay, maybe they should do a limit of five thousand. If I'm spending five thousand dollars. Then we should know that I'm not a politician. A politician is not going to spend only five thousand dollars. Many people wanted to go to the Dubai shopping festival. They told me they could not because they could not access. They could not access dollars. So, well, I, I'm not going to blame the policy makers. They, they, they have their, their facts. But I think some of these are not are not uh, favorable to to SMEs. There is organization in government agencies. Uh, policy might definitely change. Uh, maybe the policy of what person who is there before and I. We enjoy uh, the, the policy change and that might affect the way we do our, our business. So to that some of the don't know and these are uh, some of the market driven, uh, regulatory driven one. Uh, if you look at the market driven one, uh, which is uh, the number one agenda uh, when it comes to is limited access to capital and, uh, and finance. Like I said, is the two things is either the source of the capital or the accessibility to the capital. And you see that there's complex application procedures. Most of us cannot even assess that. And when we assess, it's very, very low. And the terms and conditions, if you are going to, if you are planting maize, you are planting corn or something, 
and the, the Eurotherian period is just uh, one month. How are you going to do it? Because it takes more than it takes about three or four months for you to well, plant your legs, you know, for you to be able to harvest. I are going to process it, you know? It takes some time. So most of these the banks are not are not considering uh high collateral requirements sometimes, uh, which hinder your uh, business and sustainable sustainability. Then there's rise in retail culture. Before uh, one of the advantages of SME is that you can take your team to the offices, you can take to, take to people and they will buy and you can sell them at high price prices because people cannot leave the office to go to the market. But this day you see the rise in retail culture in Nigeria. Retail uh, outlets are now coming to Nigeria. A lot of retail, a lot of uh, retail sales in Nigeria. So and this is attracting a lot of middle class. So they are competing. They are going to be competing. They are going to be competing with us. And uh, many outlets are still are still open. So the advantage that we have before that we can take our products to people or where you know where it's not accessible is you know is, is reducing because people are always get to reduce but because they are now almost everywhere. Uh, in part of the shop right at the Lambert Valley, they have about two or something in Valley. You know, first time everywhere now you can see a land say what was the civil planning to come to Nigeria. So you can go and buy this. There is one beside my, I live in Maguru. There is uh, the Prince. So you know, the Prince is there. Quite a lot of people do not even know need to go to shop right. And they have a place where they say you don't need to go to Kitch Market. They have, they have, they have everything. They are, they have uh, vegetable, they have pepper, so you don't need to, you know. So these are, these are becoming accessible. Decline all prices, anyway, that's to do with government, uh, with government revenue, uh, with a high interest rate and things like that. Then talent gap is another thing. Uh, the talent is actually very, very uh, thin, and most of the people who have the talent want to, they don't want to wait till your business goes to maturity. So again, and, again, and some of us, we need to learn, some of us, we don't have enough experience about what we want to do. A lot of people do not even have the passion to be SME. Some people are driven into it, but some people really have the passion uh, for it. And we have not taken enough, uh, in, enough, 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 develop enough competence uh, for us to, to run this. So the known or not, I'm going to rush on it quickly. The known unknowns, uh, we have insurgencies, we have agitation. I think uh, Tony mentioned, I think I mentioned the other time. You sell your products or you get some products from, from the north. Uh, I saw on Twitter last week that a bucket of uh, fruit in Bengal State is just 120 naira. Imagine in, in Lagos, you buy almost one for 100 naira. I you know, for you to go there because you are afraid of. Boko Haram, you are afraid of insecurity. So this thing gets wasted there. But you can't move them here. Again, there's agitation in the East. You don't know how government is going to handle it, whether there's going to be riots in Port there's going to be riots in uh, Umayya or something. So again, this is affecting us. And you know, these insurgencies and security issues is one of the things that are, are, are affecting us from distributing our products or from getting our, our raw materials. And again, it's affecting the investment in flow. Uh, uh, doctor has mentioned things around the FBI decreasing in Nigeria. Nobody wants to go and invest where the security situation is not uh, not starting. The ongoing corruption war it might affect banks. We don't know how long it will, it will go. We can get to the bank, so we need to diversify our, our, our risk. Uh, maybe somebody who plans to support you to support your business to boost in capital into your business might be affected one way or the other. It might not have it might not have job in codes. Maybe you didn't keep good record like I mentioned earlier. So, but one way or the other, it might, you know, it, it's a cycle. These health products, uh, uh, forever living products, you know. So what she does is she created a portal. People buy and she called this call a messenger. That they call a messenger. He doesn't have to have any interaction with you. So call a messenger goes and they buy it. And she's still working, you know. So people who are based, we get greater advantage on those of us who don't have somebody sells clothes, he buys clothes. And people go online and, and do business. And there's, before we used to rush to Ghana High, you said people send your messenger to go to Ghana High. Now you can go to Hello Food and, and book. And before you go to another one hour, the food is here. So I don't have time to go to Ghana. I don't know whether Ghana has started distributing. But I know that it's Hello Food. Who you can just go online and, and book. So this is this are threats to a lot of uh, medium scale enterprises. 
Then in the note on note, the outcome of the US election, uh, you mentioned before, there are policy change, though uh, the doctor also said that uh, global mobility might not affect uh, Nigeria. But there are some, there are some of them, there are policy, like STEM policy that can affect Nigeria in terms of uh, uh, science and technology. And uh, you know, the, the world is now a global village. Then the global security challenges as well is, 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 is there that everybody has to, has to face. Then the unknown unknowns, I won't, I won't dwell too much on that. Uh, climate change will really affect us, will it not affect us? Sustainable development will really affect more, you know, in terms of green energy and all things like that. Then the influx of strong foreign competitors, but I will move it to even uh, known unknown. Because now you, the PWC report says Ibadan and the Lagos are one of the areas that's going to be actually less attractive African cities for, for investment. So we have these foreign competitors who are coming in. Now government is trying to reduce import dependency in Nigeria. So if, if, they, if they don't want to import everything that can make in Nigeria, it's an opportunity for those guys to come here and set up business. So it's a big threat for us that what we think we have, uh, we, 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 we do on our own. We can have people who can come here to come and compete with us. And we, because of their scale, they can be more competitive. So let's look at some of the key key responses, and that's this is the, the cross of the matter, and uh, we will contribute more to you in the open forum. Uh, funding. I have two experiences just this year. This year just two weeks old, two weeks old. So based on two experiences I have with two SMEs, I will actually be giving practical example. One is a woman, uh, she's a Muslim. She I won't mention her product, so it don't steal her idea. So she has a product and uh, she went to shop right that she wants to be supplying and they tested and said, oh okay we like this we want to be supplying us however can you be supplying this to 20 of our stores and she got booked because she no capital now she needs to go and tell the bank but because of her uh, beliefs she said okay she should not be taking no i respect her her religion they said okay there is islamic banking you can go and take but how much can they can they offer her? So I thought, okay, can we just take uh, can you invite people? I said, oh, she, I know I saw about this thing, this is my idea. This my idea has been there for long. I can't allow somebody to now. The idea I've been thinking about. So the, what I thought, okay, do you want to be 100% owner of a 5 million naira business or you want to be a 20% owner of a 200 million business? So she has it. She's thinking through it. You know, see, this is emotionally connected to the idea that she gave out to this idea, so somebody's going to take that idea from her. That's the last thing I told her. It's either you want to want to do your business, you don't grow beyond five million. You have five million. But if you are twenty percent owner and you two hundred million there, I tell you you are up to ten million. So and that's that's my advice to that's my advice to her. So in, in for funding. We need to make sure that we are as far as network to high network individual. Be open to equity investment from friends and family. And I also think patients capital. Patients capital people that will give you money, they will not trouble you and okay, give me my return immediately, immediately. Yeah, I mean, they can wait for us, they can wait for us. We still have that culture here. So we should open ourselves up to actually get capital from people. Don't say you want to own 100 percent because we are 100 percent of, of nothing. That's us owning 20 percent of uh, of, uh, of something, then um, we need to develop a good and bankable business plan. And this is one of the things why we don't get money from the bank. Accessibility of funds is very difficult. Again, one of the reasons is that we don't have a business plan. No bank is going to give you any money if you don't see that your business plan, how it's going to translate to cash flow, how you are going to be able to repay their, their you can't just put your idea in your head and say you are going to get money from the bank. So if you need help, there are some people, consultants, Achieve the ISM consultant too that can actually that can actually help. Retail culture. One of the things and one of the things we saw is that most of us go into this business without actually looking at what does the market want. Without even understanding doing your market research. So we need to understand the, the, the buyer, the buyer, the unique uh, the buyer value. What does the buyer want and develop a unique value proposition. Why should you buy from me and not buy from the doctor? 
Why should you like buy from you and not buy from the other person if you are selling the same, uh, the same product? Then you the quality of your product like the example I mentioned. Because now people are taking this to retail store so that this people can actually um, collect from you and you can sell from there. Customer satisfaction survey is another, is another thing. I mentioned something around regulatory compliance. You need to make sure that you improve your compliance. Otherwise, you are going to be big time uh, 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 this, this time. Uh, again, the SME trade group lobby. I, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, uh, groups that can lobby government because, again, we have multiple taxation in Nigeria. Before you know it now, the local governments, they come and put receipts on your, your shop, you know. Before you know, you are paying your tax, you are paying everything. Multiple taxation is one of the problems that we, that we face in Nigeria. You need to strengthen your competency in corporate governance. Uh, financial management, financial reporting, and compliance. If you don't have that, you can buy. You can get people that can help you, help you with that. Energy and operating costs, like I said, is, is, it, 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 it will increase. So you can adopt shared services model. Don't say this is my office, this is my office. You, not, you can't, you, you can't uh, uh, occupy the whole of the office, you can't share. You can co you know, you, you can cohabit with somebody if, if you are not going to take the whole office. Again, another share service for that like some back office function that you can share. Three of you can share uh, somebody who a finance manager. You know, if your business is not that big, you can share HR function. There are some services that you, I think you can share. So share services, uh, share services model. Um, you need to rent. You can rent instead of instead of buying. You can modify your production technology, and that gives the example of the other other person which I'm going to talk about. So this guy used to work in a company and left and said he wants to go and attend to his family business. So what he do is uh, he, 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 has, he has fisheries. Uh, he, go, he went to fisheries. So he had this fish pond, about 20 of them. So I saw him earlier this year. I said, oh, Mr. Man, what are you going to do differently this year in your business? So he said, ah, what I'm going to do differently is actually to change my uh, production technology. He said, when, when he constructed the ponds, he did concrete ponds. That's about 20 of them. But at this one now making to spend so much on power because he has to now do ball, he has to power water, he has to evacuate. Now if he had known what he would have done is to do it with the earthen one, so that at least water can come naturally from the ground. Or he can do the cage one, do all those research, or he can do the cage one and go and put it in the dam and the and the rest of that. The other one is going to do this, he has got to modify his business model, his production technology. Again, we need to look at that as well to reduce our cost. Look at look at our production technology. Is this something can we make some 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 savings in terms of our of our cost? The forest restriction. Uh, talk talk and talk about that. One of the things we can do, we can make sure that we have product that we can export as well. Imagine if you are earning dollars at this time, a land dollar of like three hundred uh, three hundred naira yesterday. Are you able to sell it? You know. I was telling my wife, if we have any dollar, I just bring let's go and sell at this. At this time, you know, you make 300 naira from, uh, you know, you can make some 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 money. Then digital, we have mentioned that we maintain an online and offline presence, and these products are a reputable uh, marketplace. I like uh, Koga, so they were 1 billion naira on the Black Friday. Imagine the, 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 the sales that they make. So you can register in those kind of uh, uh, marketplace even uh, your digital and e-commerce uh, reach uh, for risky regions, but places you cannot travel to, people can see from there, can buy and can create it, and you know, one way or another get to get to get to them. So it's one of the it's one of the opportunities for all that I think we need to focus on. Another one is value chain focus, and that's my friend, which is visual as well. So what he does, he did fingerlings, he did the, everything. Is across the value chain. So what we, what are the things we will do differently again is to make sure that he has focus, and that's one of the problems that we have. We want to operate across the value chain. Why don't we just develop a niche for ourselves and, be, and specialize? So if you want to do the fingerlings, which is expensive to produce, and sometimes the fingerlings might just die for one month, and instead of them to go and buy, you know, oh, let's quickly produce another one. Or see that in maybe six months, and when a month they are supposed to reap. And it's called that they are not repaying it because you didn't have uh, fingerlings. So the same thing, we are, we are, we are into agri, we want to process, we want to just, you know, make sure that we are focused so that we don't spread ourselves, ourselves in and be clear about what a long-term objective is. Competition, 
is, is going to be there. You are going to have a competition. You need to keep yourself abreast of the new trends in the, in the, in the market. Uh, you need to build partnership with foreign pa uh, partners if, uh, if possible. Uh, improve your quality of service uh, because at the end of the day, people buy from people. Uh, you can be selling already, you are selling already. But why would I buy from you and not buy from that person? the kind of quality of service that you offer onto, onto me. Uh, management capability, we need to understand our business model. Uh, spend time to find good value. Pay them. Pay them, see it as, as an investment. You can partner with a valuable skill development force as well. You can engage SME consultants to build capacity. And we need to leverage online trading. A lot of online trading uh, in Nigeria, we don't like to read. But for you to be successful, you definitely need to, to read and read and keep updating and keep updating your, yourself. Um, I think that's the that's the end of, of, of that one. So we can accept that. Thank you, man. So well, as we proceed to the open forum session, I am sure we have quite a lot of questions. And 